Hey YouTube, Mr. Terry back once again for another History Teacher Reacts video. Today we're going to be checking out another video by Sam Onella. This one is titled, Historical Misconceptions for You to Bring Up During Family Dinner. Alright, <laughs> great title there, right? History is full of misconceptions, things that um, get, I don't know, kind of just, just kind of pass through society often through you know films and pop culture and stuff like that and uh there's plenty of them so i'm interested to see which ones they kind of um which ones that you know, he chooses to to highlight here so um yeah we'll check this out okay if you like the original video there'll be a um a description or in the description down below will be a link to it so you can give them a like and subscribe um, if you like the idea of history teachers kind of checking out history videos I um, invite you to subscribe to this channel um, so you can hopefully see more stuff. But regardless, I appreciate you being here. Let's go ahead and start the video. This episode of Salmonella Academy is brought to you by Skillshare. All right, Sam, what you got for us? Hey, kid. Yeah, you. I just got me? off the phone with the big man upstairs, and he told me that I need to clear a few things up around here. So without further ado, here's 10 pieces of malarkey that you might still be spreading. Number right. one, nobody was ever burned to death at the Salem witch trials. Of the accused, 15 <laughs> died in prison, 19 were hanged, and one was squished to death. That last one is way more interesting than any cremation, by the way. Dude was a badass. His name was Giles Corey. He was 81 years old Smashed and so done boulders. with the town of Salem's garbage that he wouldn't even dignify the trial with a plea. So the town stuck in between two boards and stacked rocks on top of him in an effort to draw out a confession. But every time they tried to get something out of him, all they would say was, More weight. This went on for three solid days until he finally died, never giving any indication as to whether or not he was a witch. One can only wonder. Number two, the OG Buddha wasn't... So yeah, the Salem Witch Trials... People, yeah, people definitely think it was all, like, burning, but really it wasn't as much. I mean, um, yeah, other you know, types of executions, but yeah, interesting period of history, um, where you have that, like, uh, it, people being accused of that. Um, most of them are actually women too, uh, were, were the ones like, uh, supposedly, you know, um, practicing sort of witchcraft. A lot of them elderly women, elderly single women, if I remember right. Uh, they, they thought, you know, these elderly single women, yeah, they were more likely to be like possessed by, evil spirits or something like that but um yeah a lot of way different ways i hadn't heard of the squashing somebody holy cow all right what's the what do they got for number two here whether or not he was a witch one can only wonder number two the og buddha wasn't the obese guy that's budai a chinese folk character meant to represent maitreya aka future buddha now this shirt is double sad number three buddha wasn't a <laughs> yeah you usually see that you know the um one big thing you're going to get different with depictions of buddha is also where you come from um, when you look at more central asia you will see more of like a um like a, a thinner kind of buddha you know out of that but i know like in, in east asia maybe around china um something like that um southeast asia you'll uh, sometimes see uh, more of like the larger bellied one so yeah there's a lot of different depictions of buddha um and probably usually when it comes to a lot of that like religious artwork it'll reflect like what they depict will reflect more of their own societies kind of common common things than uh somewhere else you know what i mean um you, you'll see that kind of adapt it happens in a lot of religions right your art usually reflects more of your local culture than anything else all right let's see uh, uh what AKA i got number three future buddha now this shirt is double sad number three buddha wasn't a god either he was just a guy named gautama sure. now this shirt is triple sad number four yeah siddhartha um yeah, definitely look in. You can, um, there's uh, a part of the story for the Buddhas, his Siddhartha years, as they call it, before he becomes the, the Buddha, becomes the Buddha, kind of, which meaning kind of like the enlightened one, um, after he supposedly achieved Nirvana. But yeah, there's quite um, a bit of kind of folklore or uh, story or whatever about his life early on as a prince and sort of escaping the palace and uh look, look you know definitely look into that but there's yet yeah, a lot more about about that um the whole seeing as a god um 
that too. That can also vary between different sects of Buddhism and others. I mean, there are some Hindu, Hindu traditions even that will see him sort of as a god. Now, remember, Hindus aren't Buddhists, but um, he came up through the Hindu community. So some see him as that way. Um, some some sects too will kind of see him almost more like a deity in a way. So some of that, yeah, depends on a lot. But definitely the roots come from him being a an actual actual person. All right, number four. Or ever heard of a vomitorium? Turns out, no, it's not a place where Roman nobles would go to make room for more pheasant spleen and lobster eyelids. It's just a big entranceway to the coliseums that hordes of peasants would spew out of. Number five. Oh, uh, that's it. Never heard of that. Um, the Colosseum was amazing as far as uh, architecturally. Um, there's a lot of gates and stuff to get in and out, so it could you know hold around you know like fifty thousand people or so at its time. Um, but it was pretty amazing how quickly they could usher uh, people in and out. Um, a lot of other cool features about the Colosseum too. Um, it had a couple like public restrooms, some water fountains in it. I mean, it resembled just like a modern day modern day stadium uh at times it had a retractable roof that they use kind of like sails almost that they would they would rig up so you could you could um um yeah you could you could cover it like because you know in rome central italy there it's very hot so yeah all kinds of cool features about the uh um call seam that you could look into of course the filling of water when they they fill it up sometimes for naval battles pretty cool too but the, but yeah we basically just stuck to almost the same design if you think about it entrance way to the coliseums that hordes of peasants would spew out of number five washington never cut down a cherry tree in his youth i don't get this yeah. one at all apparently it's supposed to paint the man in a good light somehow it's like tyler what the hell happened while we were gone where's the tree in the front yard oh yeah that was me got bored just felt like vandalizing something you know <laughs> hey what about my honest character number six yeah was it I can't tell a lie thing? Yeah, not true. Other one about Washington was like the wooden teeth thing. That was not true, but might have had animal teeth. They say possibly, um, but yeah, a lot of lot of uh, yeah those stories around you know uh, Washington. Okay, six. What do we got? The pyramids weren't actually built by slaves. These workers right. were respected members of society. They ate meat and worked in three-month shifts, right. and even got to be buried right next to the tomb after their death. Matter of fact, that's more than we can say for the people working on man's greatest achievements today. If I spent years of my life helping to build the space station, you're damn right I'd want the Salmonella Memorial Corpse Receptacle floating along right next to it. That would be amazing. Number seven. Yeah, that's actually the the uh, slaves building the pyramids thing is one of the biggest misconceptions. No, these were skilled workers that were paid. Um, we have seen a lot with the archaeology about their living conditions, stuff like that. We know a lot of things about what they were paid in. They were paid in lots of different things. Some of it was uh, um, uh, drink, you know, uh, alcoholic, basically drinks and stuff like that. But yeah, they worked. Basically, what you did is, yeah, you'd work for like three months on the pyramids. And usually when they worked on the pyramids, they were usually farmers, too, because um, when it was the just the plant, like the growing season, not like the planting or harvesting part of the season um, that's when they would go work on the pyramids so they kind of had two jobs that way while stuff's growing they go ahead and then grow um, with the pyramids there so yeah Egypt had plenty of money uh, making money off of trade of the Nile it's almost like a monopoly board you know everybody's coming up and down and they make money off of that so they have the ability to pay um, for their laborers all right number seven Seven, the Great Wall of China is not the only man-made object visible from space. I don't know where you did just got it. this one from. First of all, there's no way you could see it with the unaided no, eye. The wall is not. like 30 meters thick at most, while the distance to outer space is generally recognized to be 100 I guess it kilometers depends on, up, known as the Karman Line. Yeah, I mean, to the Karman Line, perspective, but that's yeah, like me holding up a standard-sized guitar pick from across the entire length of a football field and asking you what color it is. Also, there are plenty of man-made objects that are way bigger in terms of local surface area than the Great Wall. So even Home if Depot it was visible, yeah. there's no Huge. way it would be the only one. Number eight, you might have heard this one before. You know, Hitler was a jerk and all, but hey, he made the Autobahn, so at least he was efficient. Actually, Hitler didn't create the Autobahn. It was already there. He just helped expand it into newer territory. In a similar vein, Mussolini didn't make the trains run on time. With most of Italy's infrastructure repairs thing. happening before his rise to power in 1922, and even then they weren't nearly as punctual as he'd like you to believe. 
So unfortunately, you're gonna have to find something else to like about these fascists. Like Hitler's elegant way of speaking. Or the way Mussolini says spaghetti. Paschetti! Number nine. Um, the trains running on time thing with Mussolini, that was kind of was a famous thing i don't know if yeah that, that it didn't really have an uh, uh, an impact on that necessarily but it was like hey i don't i don't you know asking like like an italian under the mussolini years being like hey uh you know asking do you do you like mussolini do you like living you know under mussolini be like well no but at least the trains run on time so it's like yeah i don't like everything but life is going smoothly in a way you know what i mean so it's it's far more of a metaphor than anything else for sure all right, number nine. Looks like they're wrapping up. And Iron Maidens weren't actual torture devices used in medieval times. Basically what happened is some archaeologists in the 1800s saw an old metal coffin and some spikes and said, yo, wouldn't it be wildin' if we put these things up in here so that way if someone goes in it, they get poked in their bits? You are a sick man, Cornelius. I like it. Into the museum it goes. At least that Iron Maiden was real. They were as real <laughs> as it gets. Still are. And don't you forget it. Number 10. So yeah, so they know for sure that, that those things they found, like the, the coffin type things with needles or whatever spikes were not part of that contraption uh, as an actual Iron Maiden. I'm not, I wasn't sure of that, but God, oh, that thing is such a fearsome looking torture device. Jeez. All right, is this their last one? Didn't they say there was 10? And Einstein never failed math. He had mastered both integral and differential calculus by the age of 15. 99% chance this one was just made up yeah, to make glue eaters feel better about themselves. <laughs> well, congratulations, Dimitri. Looks like you failed pre-algebra for the third time. Brady still can't graduate. Well, hey, that means I'm still on par with famous smart science man, so, uh, yeah. Worship me. So it just goes to share that we Yeah, so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that was true or not. I mean, obviously the guy knew mathematics. I mean, and probably learned a lot more when he was older. But yeah, I guess it makes you know having this idea that like he started as like a normal person with an average intelligence level in mathematics when he becomes this expert. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe that was kind of just kind of uh, created in a way to to be more like inspirational to people. Like you don't have to be an you know an Einstein to be able to become like an Einstein. You know what I mean? You can work at it and get better and and those sort of things but uh yeah i i yeah that's something i didn't know i thought maybe that was true i mean whatever all right looks like they're gonna wrap up see what they got we've all got a lot to learn about the world around us that's why you need to go to skillshare skillshare is an online sure. learning support community them. with over twenty thousand classes in technology design business and more Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics so you can improve your skills, <laughs> so unlock new noises. opportunities, and do the work he's, you love. They've got today. great courses in graphic design and animation, which I've clearly already mastered. I mean, check this out. But I'm sure you could get a lot of use out of them. You can also learn plenty of more recreational skills, like how to solve a Rubik's Cube or how to play chess really well. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today part with of a Rubik's special Cube. offer just for my viewers, where you can get, get two months of Skillshare completely there, free. To sign up, go to skl.sh slash Samo. Again, go to skl.sh slash Samo. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right then. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm glad there was I'm glad there was um, there were some in there that I wasn't exactly I didn't know it was a misconception or not like the Iron Maiden thing. Um, I didn't know that a lot of their stuff. Hopefully, I was able to add a little bit to it um, as well. But yeah, there are so many historical misconceptions out there, and most of them are I mean most of them are pretty harmless. They don't really have much of an effect. But of course, some can. They can they can change the way you view history in general. I mean, I think the like the one with the pyramids, um, slaves building the pyramids, that's a pretty big thing to understand their uh, foundation and social structure and things like that because that is that is kind of a common one. So, you know, one good thing about constantly trying to learn history is hopefully uh, trying to find more and more sources for things, especially the important stuff, the stuff that really matters, you know, how it changes our perception about larger topics. So it's important for us to keep doing that. 
Okay, great. Well, yeah, I know I enjoyed the video. That was good to um, to, good to check that uh, to check that out. Hopefully, you were able to learn from uh, the video as well and some of the commentary. I want to put out a few invitations out there for you. Um, if you would like to be a part of a kind of a um, uh, discussion community about history, I invite you to join the Discord that we have. Uh, the link to that will be down in the description. There's also a few ways you can support this channel and the content that comes out. Uh, you can uh, join our Patreon, uh, make a pledge on Patreon. Um, one of the uh, perks of pledging on Patreon, regardless of donation uh, level is to be able to vote in a poll where about once a week or so I uh, poll the patrons um, with videos that they would like to, to see talked about so you can join that um, also there's other ways to donate you can donate through uh, YouTube itself live super chats um, during uh, premieres that we have and during live lessons um, also there's a Streamlabs account to support the channel that way um, any donations are appreciated, of course, never required or expected. All right, with that, I think we'll go ahead and uh, bring this to an end. Hope to see you very soon, and hopefully that time is soon. Bye.